So I spent the day watching my way through the Josephine Baker collection on Filmstruck because they are all about to expire on Friday. And I thought, what a better way to spend the 4th of July than catching up with one of our greatest expats, Miss Josephine Baker. So the, the five films start in 1927 and go all the way through 1945. And it was really interesting to watch her, um, like, mature as a performer and watch how film from the silent era through World War II sort of evolved in France. So the first film is 1927's La Revue des Revues, which is basically just filming the Folie Bergère with like a little bit of a frame narrative. The frame narrative is not Josephine Baker. She's only in two of the many, many bits in this. Um, the frame narrative follows a woman named Gabrielle who has the smallest feet in France. She wins the Cinderella um, contest because her feet are so small and ends up on the stage and then tries to get publicity and falls in love with a, a dirty rat because it's, it's entertainment. But the bulk of the film are these really amazing, strange um, musical numbers that are in two-strip Technicolor and... The costumes are bizarre, and just everything is bizarre and wonderful, and and uh, I didn't need the frame narrative. I could have just watched the bizarreness that were the um, various dances, and it would have been fine. Um, the next film I watched really was a Josephine Baker starring film. This is 19, also 1927. This is Siren of the Tropics, um, La Serine des Tropiques, um, and it follows a rich Parisian dude who wants to divorce his wife and marry his goddaughter because that's how people roll. So he sends his goddaughter's uh, boyfriend, fiance, whatever, to his colonial um, holdings in an island um, while there to, and, and asks uh, the man who's looking after his, his stuff to kill him. While there, the man uh, meets Josephine Baker, who is um, the daughter of an old colonial dude who has sort of left everything and is now a drunkard. Um, it's a little, and then obviously she falls in love with him and then tries to save him from dying and then follows him to France and then becomes a big, um, yes, obviously she becomes a big musical star and, um, cannot get the love that she wants because he is white. Um, and that is sort of the, the through line in a lot of these is that she can't ever get the guy because She's black and they're white. Um, and of all of these, this is probably the most sort of exoticizing of her. Um, you know, they make her speak in um, sort of in a way that makes her seem less intelligent than she probably would have been. Um, she looks really beautiful and does some great dance numbers. Um, and she's truly an actress in this one. In the previous one, it was just a filming of her dancing. She truly acts in this one and is, and is wonderful. I just wish the film was a little less paternalistic. But um, it's 1927, so that's what you're going to get. Uh, the next film is Zuzu, which uh, stars a very young Jean Gabin as um, Josephine Baker's twin brother. Not really. They uh, were paired together as orphans at the circus, raised as twins, She's kind of in love with him. He's kind of thinks he's thinks of her as his sister. He's kind of a, a douchebag also and, like, gets into trouble all the time. And he's totally not, like, worth her time. But, you know, whatever. He's drunk on being, so he, she's going to fall in love. So she uh, is starts working in Paris as a um, uh, sort of looking for laundress uh, for a cabaret. She then eventually becomes a cabaret star when her brother ends up in prison um, for, he's being charged with murder, but she's seen who the real murderer is and tries to find them, and then she loses his love. But is a great um, cabaret star, and her big act is her singing about Haiti in a cage. And it's really depressing and wonderful at the same time. And I forgot I wanted to mention about uh, Siren of the Tropics is there were some moments in that just like in Zuzu, where um, they're really attempting to do interesting things with the camera. So in Siren of the Tropics, there's a few moments where 
it's, sh it's shot in this really weird angle where you kind of see from her point of view that I thought was really fascinating. And there's moments in Zuzu that are also shot with like really fluid, this is 1934, so you're getting really fluid camera movements. And, and in almost all of her films, she does these amazing smiles that are like her just being carefree and smiling that are really um, infectious and, and lovely. And I can see, um, I can only imagine what, she's so full of energy in these films. I can only imagine what it must have been like to see her like live on the stage. Um, that'd be 10, 15 times more expressive and explosive and amazing, one would think. Um, the next film I watched is from 1935, and this is Princess Tam Tam. It's another one that's a little exoticizing um, and actually was filmed on location in Tunisia. Um, so that's, that's fascinating. Um, and Zuzu was actually the first major motion film, so non-race film, non-independent film, major backed by a studio film to star a person of color um, or a woman of color, that being um, Josephine Baker. Princess Tam Tam takes this one step further with a much larger budget and a uh, location shoot in Tunisia where she is playing a Tunisian woman who um, a... Uh, an author is trying to find a new story and he goes to Tunisia and meets her and then sort of in a, in a Pygmalion kind of way decides to make her into a princess and take her back to Paris and show her off. Um, but his wife, fiance, I can't remember now is sort of jealous and tries to make her act, you know, more in tune with who she really is and gets her to dance. But like her dancing is amazing and, and everyone loves it. Um, but eventually she, you know, leaves his ass and, and goes back to her home and is much happy, much happier living with real things and earth and not fake things and in a, an apartment building. And I feel like we can all um, sort of relate to that feeling. Um, so then the rent's a little paternalistic and a little uh, grossly exoticizing of, of her, but her talent is so amazing and her dancing is so great and it has some of the best costumes. Um, the last film it's 1945, The French Way, or Fausse Alerte, and it's set during the war, and it's about a woman who is opening up her, reopening up, Josephine Baker, Baker plays a woman who's reopening up her cabaret, um, and she's living in an apartment building across from another apartment building, and the two owners, or two people who are living in the two apartment buildings are, are fighting and have been fighting for a long time. However, their underage son and daughter have fallen in love and want to get married, so Josephine Baker's character comes in and tries to sort of um, fix the problem and that, let them get married. Um, and there's air raids and all kinds of strange wartime shenanigans. It's, it's a farce, like a French farce, traditional French farce, but during air raids during World War II. And strange, but also like you got to do something, I guess. Um, and she gets to do, you know, an, another handful of wonderful musical moments. And um, just really shine. Um, I kind of wish she'd gotten to make more films. I think she has such a uh, unique presence. But I'm sure she probably enjoyed uh, live performance more than film. Um, film is such a strange medium and, and, and so cold when you're a, a live performer that I would imagine she probably loved doing live more. Um, but these films were, were wonderful and I'm glad I finally got to see her in the context, I've seen some of her dance routines before out of context, but to see them in context with the films were wonderful and she's fantastic. And if you have Filmstruck, you can watch these films through Friday. And if you're a disc buyer, they're available from Kino and you should definitely check it out regardless of how you do it um, because Josephine Baker is one of the great performers of all time and she should be um, known by everyone, not just for who she was and as a, a point in history, but as someone who you've actually seen their work. Um, so check that out. Josephine Baker, happy 4th of July.